coronaviruses all belong to the same family and we call them coronaviruses because if you look at the outside structure of the virus they look like crowns and in latin corona means crown this is why it got its name it's not named after the beer First two major symptoms observed in the majority of cases are a dry cough and fever. Individuals with underlying respiratory conditions like asthma or tuberculosis or some other respiratory illness are more prone to getting a severe infection from COVID-19. The data is showing that the elderly or people with other medical conditions are at most risk of getting severe illness or dying. We're constantly analyzing the data to understand who is most at risk for dying from COVID-19. Children are not getting as severe of infections with this coronavirus. and there is still a lot of uncertainty as to how much of the disease is comparatively mild. So if it is mostly comparatively mild, that sounds like it's good, but actually it comes with a kicker, which is that it's much more difficult to control. of fluid that we uh, emit when we cough or sneeze or even talk. It's not clear how long this virus can survive on surfaces, but it can survive for quite a long time. There's virtually no evidence that the coming change in the seasons will help at all. China has really quite varied climatic conditions from very humid places like Hong Kong in the south to parts of the north which are much colder and less humid, and they found virtually no difference. I also note that it's been transmitting quite well in Singapore, and Singapore is on the equator. So this suggests that different climatic conditions are not going to have a major impact. have those data, then you're going to be able to be much, much more precise about how many people were exposed, how many people got infected, how many had mild disease, how many of the children became infected, whether or not there is actually a different attack rate across the different age cohorts. All of that at the moment is mostly speculation. But with this, we'd be able to actually say something sensible about how lethal it is. People should be aware that this is an extremely serious situation. They should also not feel helpless. It's not a time to panic, but it is a time to prepare. And there's a bunch of stuff that we can all do which will make us much less likely to get infected. And if we're less likely to get infected, we're less likely to transmit it to our communities and other people, including our loved ones. A lot of people out there are clamoring to go and buy masks. If you are healthy and you have no symptoms and you are not around other people who may be sick, you don't need to go out and buy a mask. Now, if you are sick, wearing the correct type of mask may prevent you from spreading the disease to other people. 
what people need to do is follow really strict hygiene precautions. And that includes washing your hands, either 20 seconds with soap and water or with hand sanitizer, making sure that you are not touching your eyes and your nose. We recommend eating a healthy diet, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, stay hydrated, get plenty of rest and sleep. That is really important for boosting your immune system and helping your body fight pathogens before they make you sick. Even if we cannot keep the virus out forever, we can still slow it down. And every moment we can slow it down buys us time, makes less stress on healthcare, and enables us to hopefully get to the point when we're gonna be able to move past this.